right? I want people to be uh, use this information to become anti-fragile. I don't want people to be centralized. I don't want people to be dependent on the system that is so destructive to our society because if they're dependent on the system then they'll put their energy their resources their effort their lives towards maintaining the system and i think that's one of the problems with our society is because there are so many people invested in the system that they have no way out so they're working for the system and the system is a perpetual loop that is basically destroying us right so keep this in mind now i'm going to pop up some charts here take a look at this this is one of the graphs that really triggered this discussion that I thought we'd start talking about this stuff, right? Now, this guy, Blair Fix, is uh, he's coming out of the discipline of uh, Jonathan Nitzan with, uh, under his studies, one of his students um, that I believe he's finished his PhD or master's or whatever it is, but he's doing a lot of work in processing data. And if you wanna look at some data, it's not a bad idea to follow his Twitter feed. It's, it presents some nice data and uh, it's fun to look at, right? And we did, uh, we put out a couple of videos on Jonathan Nitsan, uh, Jonathan Nitsan's uh, differential accumulation where I had a minor correspondence with him. I sent him a video that we did and uh, he replied, you know, correcting a couple of things I was talking about, uh, just using the right terminology. And I talk about it in this video. If you want to know where this person's tweets are coming from, this data is coming from, right? And I highly recommend following Jonathan Nitsan. And if you're into economics, looking at what he's presenting, okay? And specifically under the umbrella of capital as power. It's sort of a terminology vocabulary that has entered my psyche that I've been using a lot, which is very much uh, a beautiful descriptive phrase about how our society functions right now okay now as for this graph what you're seeing here is the rise and fall of the british empire as written in relative energy consumption per capita which is fantastic right now this graph you can see the time the years are at the bottom and then um what does that say relative energy per capita yeah relative energy use per capita and it's pretty intuitive, right? If you're alive, you're a functioning human being, <laughs> you're late, you're, we just started. This is the first graph that we're presenting, by the way, Muhammad. So uh, I think you'll appreciate this. And Muhammad, this links up to, in the end, I hope you can stick around for the two hours, this links up to oil, petrodollar, Iran, foreign policy, okay? now this is energy consumption per capita and it's very much sort of a life cycle right you can see for us human beings as well we consume a lot of energy a lot of energy we have a peak and then we die off and boop, off we go right empires any entity really follows the same model right and this is uk empire uh fall of what is it uk energy per uh use per capita relative to world average right so as the world expanded populations grew and the british empire collapsed their energy consumption came down pretty intuitive elder god i'm glad you're catching this one you got this one uk empire right energy consumption per capita in uk empire relative to its time span really and the peak you know it's got little markers there and stuff like this and in the description of this video i'll probably have links to all not all but most of the images tweets graphs uh websites that we're going to be referencing information for okay 1820 i guess yeah at around there 1900 which was would have been it right now keep this in mind and here's another one this is u.s energy consumption per capita okay so the title for this is the rise and fall of the american empire as written in relative energy consumption per person now i can't say u.s empire has collapsed completely and it's it's pretty much on the downturn there's no doubt about it right industrial revolution sure gina how are you doing right so you can see here that the u.s is has a double top 
this is something that occurs in the stock market as well right sometimes stocks do double tops right so all these graphs sort of relate to the stock market as well which is pretty cool and keep in mind these both these graphs right keep remember where the one value is one is which is right here oops right here one is here right now one represents the world average from what I understand this graph I didn't dig down too deep but it's more of an intuitive feel for this right and then the US the one is further down right so the US is much higher than the UK right even though it peaked at what is that seven seven times relative to the world now it's down to around four times relative to the world right is there a Chinese graph haha -ha, water exile the next one is China indeed we're talking about global politics global economy <laughs> economy and stuff we must include China because that is the rival right this year Iran stock market was like this up 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 up, up down <laughs> what is the definition of unit energy per use it's it's an average right I believe what they did for this is took energy consumption globally took that as the average and then went to each region and calculated that per capita right and whatever that was would be the multiple that you see on the y-axis I believe that's the way they did it that's 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 the way I would have done it right now if you take a look at this this isn't a graph of China's energy consumption Per capita 1975 year or something and then it's just going through the roof right remember Nixon going to China in the 1970s I believe right early 1970s late 1970s was it mid 19 not late but mid early 1970s late 1960s when, when did Nixon go to China right all of a sudden you see this energy consumption go through the roof right keep in mind the one is up here right so that's one for China so China is now energy consumption per capita is more than the world average but keep in mind that the US is still much more than the US uh, world average US is four times the world average and this is you know it's taking everything to consideration right if China is going to eat or not also notice where the one is yeah Seoul UK thank you very much for pointing that all right very important however Ch the Chinese graph is going like this to turn that around it's not gonna flip down right so the Ch China is going like this US is like this where they meet is very crucial right where they meet is very crucial Cheryl 1972 Nixon went to China and that's gonna come into play in another graph that we're gonna talk about okay so this is important to keep in mind depending on where you live in the world right here's another graph from the same person okay this graph only goes to yeah I know uh, so UK there's uh, we're not going all the way to, to uh, uh, 2021 some of the graphs are gonna go all the way to 2020 some of the data I'm gonna present you know go 10 years ago it, because we're looking at the trend we're not looking at specific time points okay um, so it's just the data available to me right the US graph goes to uh, 2020 okay so here's the US graph let's do show that again Boop. so US graph is here so if that was 2005 is it 2020 du, 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 du. oh ignore me okay <laughs> I thought it was so check this out here is another graph which I thought was useful okay this is related to the stock market now keep this next graph in mind when we pop up some graph in the stock market right because we're gonna hit something else before the stock market but here is another graph that Blair presented if you want to understand the stock market Bechler and Nitsan and that Jonathan Nitsan and Bechler is the other person that worked with Jonathan Nitsan in uh, differential accumulation pow capitalist power website that they have where they present a lot of information it's if you want to follow economics and world events current events I highly recommend subscribing to that information they are economists they are they are presenting data that you will not find in any other mainstream or even uh, most of the alternative uh, economic mindsets that you're gonna look at right so 
The description of this graph is this. If you want to understand the stock market, Bechler and Nitsan's power index is a good starting point. It's the ratio of the S&P 500 to the average US wage. The movement of the movement of the power index is revealing and scary. We are currently in uncharted waters. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And you can get a lot of information from this graph or certain types of information from this graph. I definitely knew I was. Watergate scandal. Buffett index coming. No Buffett index. I'm not a fan of Warren Buffett. So uh, his is the legacy system. His is the system of uh, co-opting government and passing regulations in large part right so uh, i'm more of a fan of uh decentralized buffett is more a fan of centralized power right but take a look at this thing this is power index one uh basically the power index is equal to the s p 500 price divided by average us wage so what this is saying is that the stock market is the highest it's ever been relative to us wages so it's basically the us stock market is out of reach of the general citizens of the united states right that are living on wages so there's a couple of ways you can take a look at this or interpret it, or more than a couple of ways you can interpret this one of the ways you can interpret this is this is a bubble right another way you can interpret this is this is inflation right those are two ways you can look at this right branching off from that corruption money laundering uh theft uh trickle up economics multiple things can relate to that right 21st century february ch -ch -ch, inflation bubble and m2 ah Saul, i like the way you think we're gonna look at the m we're gonna look at the m1 we're not looking at the m2 we're gonna look at m1 but that's coming up but before we get into that stuff so keep this graph in mind as well i want to pop these guys down Because right now we're gonna mainly focus on the United States because the United States is a driving mechanism of the world economy based on energy consumption, if you wanna think about it, right? Energy consumption, four times the world average, right? Important, important. How do you, uh, how do you, how do people from low social economic backgrounds learn to tap into these bubbles or is it completely impossible it's water exile it's not completely impossible it's about education it's about understanding the market it's about mathematics right you people need to learn mathematics to be able to take advantage and understand how systems work and decide where they want to be right Kima Wars. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Welcome to our live stream. Now, since we're talking about the United States right now, okay, because we're going to focus on this a little bit because it's connected up with a whole bunch of other things. I'm in Canada. Whatever happens in the United States affects me greatly. Hence, <laughs> I focused on the United States, right? Here is now, this is from 2013, gang. Okay, on our Discord page. I linked up a video sort of running through um, US budget okay what the United States is going to be spending uh, and I believe started from 1960s or 1950s and it's a video of this sort of pie chart going through where the um, mandatory spending is and discretionary spending is and how much the military spending is I think it was more of the disc uh, um, discretionary spending chart right where it showed the military spending coming down going up right and I'm gonna show you that those guys as well right Kimmy Wars I really regret that my country countries does not have a stem education system implemented not in my time and no it's everybody's responsibility to educate yourself really gang the centralized education we have a stem rollout in canada and the united states does but the education system is horrendous completely garbage 
right so it's up to each individual to make sure you're educating yourself if you're depending on a centralized power to educate you they are not going to educate you okay so UK Canadian Central Bank talked about choosing a time and a place to consider blockchain currencies last week yes yeah, Saul they're trying to eliminate cash in Canada and in most of the Western world if they eliminate cash in uh, in our countries uh, we're basically serfs we're slaves we have no privacy no anonymity we're we're done for right uh, so and I wouldn't trust the whole, the whole point of blockchain technology is to decentralize currency is to decentralize information when governments are coming in saying they want to use blockchain technology to ro roll out the new currencies or whatnot well that's totally centralizing it that that goes against it's like saying war is peace right it's total opposite la fatlo tony how are you doing elder god going to throw in some politics a certain cinema chain wants COVID password for entry government responds whatever you want to do <laughs> crazy i feel like i had the free choice to burn me in the work market i really do my best to educate yeah uh, you have to i had to re-educate myself uh many times over okay many times over so this pie chart that we're looking at right mandatory spending is in the dark blue which is what the united states has to spend money on right and that's like we're going to look at the chart here let me show you what uh, mandatory uh here's the breakup of it right so this is basically president proposed total spending for 2013 and this is discretionary spending and interest on debt right so the mandatory spending is medicare and social security mainly right that you see in the bottom pie chart with the dark blue and the yellow and then the discretionary spending is military uh interest food agriculture stuff like this right so what you're seeing here and this is 2013 it 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 pretty much follows the same pattern except for one thing i want to show you this um graph right now so keep this in mind actually before we show this graph let me show you a couple of other pie uh pie charts so important to remember right what what the united states spends money on a bigger chunk goes towards mandatory spending and a smaller chunk goes towards what they can decide to spend on and then there's a certain chunk there that goes towards interest and the interest is right now interest rates are zero right once interest rates start going up oh my oh my oh my let me take these two guys down and let me pop up these two guys this is the breakdown of the discretionary spending and the mandatory spending for 2013. you guys can take a look at this but the main thing you want to take a look at is the well the mandatory spending huge chunk of it goes to social security and medicare right the rest of it broken down between food and agro and that, that stuff the discretionary spending is what they can make a decision on to spend on basically more than 50 percent is going to military and then you got education there government housing all that jazz right so more of it goes to military i'm just going to get caught up with chat i'm going to keep this graph up there for a second okay these pie charts lark park yeah i'm very disappointed in our u.s education we're supposed to be the richest and the most powerful country yet the u.s can't provide something simple as food education health shelter and the environment thank you for, um yeah lark park crazy thank you for existing i'm adoring you and the content you're providing congrats for the work. my pleasure and thank you for being here saul uh compared to the rest of the world it clearly is doing uh really well so what what do you compare to what do you compare to right i think the only comparison that you can really do is is got to be relativistic and you got to compare it to yourself as well <laughs> laugh out loud tony redeeming points thousand 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 four thousand five hundred <laughs> awesome oh my god says stop that laugh out loud tony at some point we're going to do auctions and give stuff away right uh you, you can bid on that pie chart will need to be bigger for biden haha <laughs> now take a look at this remember this discretionary spending and mandatory spending and i'm going to pop out this chart again this pie chart mandatory spending discretionary spending right 
And here's a graph. What's happened is mandatory spending, there's a deviation for until mid 1980s, right? Mid 1980s, discretionary spending and mandatory spending, they're pretty much shadowing each other. In the mid 1980s, when certain political mindsets took place in the United States, you're seeing a deviation, right? Let me come up here so you see. And that's continuing. And right now at the end, whoop, mandatory spending is going like this. Discretionary spending is going like this, right? So there's a huge break here. So what you're seeing in the, what this means in the above pie chart is mandatory spending is gonna take a bigger chunk of the US spending, right? Important, important, important. Let's take this down. Let's take both of these guys down. Now, what is spending? Well, you need the money to spend, right? Where do you get the money? The United States gets this money through taxing. Uh, do they tax corporations anymore? <laughs> right? But basically payroll tax and personal tax and this, this food sales, uh, oil tax. Oh, they get all their money from there, right? But somewhere they generate the money, right? I thought I have to redeem them to use it in auction. Uh, you do but you haven't you haven't when you bid on something then we ask you to uh redeem the points and then i supply them. so what the what just happened to my but i they go into never never now but what i can do to laugh out loud tony i'm going to re remind me on discord i'll reimburse you these redeem points I, i'll reject them when i reject them they come back to you and then during the auction you can uh use them up you'll reserve them can i have them back <laughs> i love i love tony just remind me in discord remind me in discord to do this okay remind me in discord to do this okay hold your points gang at some point we're gonna do auction and give things away again okay i'm thinking about doing multiple versions of these things now money supply okay the federal reserve of the United States which isn't really of the United States as a private organization in collaboration with government with centralized banks right Federal Reserve banks getting together deciding on the money uh, monetary policy right how much money they're gonna make available and whatnot here's the m1 data we're going to do a little mathematics on this after we finish these graphs because I want to pop these up. I just want to make sure we're not going over time. Okay, cool. This is M1 data. M1 data, let me read you the description, just one paragraph. Well, thank my pleasure, love. But make sure you remind me, please. I need some honey this time. All the God says <laughs> this is so suspicious. Check this out. What is M1 data? Here's just one paragraph that I'm quoting from an article that I wrote many, many moons ago. Okay, I wrote this like many, many moons ago. I'm gonna link it up in the description of this video. This is from archive.org, my previous website. And if you go to, uh, and the title of this article was 11 of the most important economic events of the last 11 years, collapsing the economy in the build up to World War III. And if you go to point number five, it says year 2006, discontinuous of M3. And M3 is big money that the Federal Reserve was, uh, making available and they had to debs how are you doing they they had to announce how much money they're making available but they discontinued the m3 so we knew something was up and we're going to look at graphs that are going to explain to us what was up right but here's a little quote from another article that i took which explains what m1 m2 and m3 are m1 is the most volatile equivalent to cash on the loose M2 is less volatile, equivalent to savings accounts deposits. M3 is least volatile, equivalent to rich folks' money, uh, which they park, right? So M1 is how much money was made available by the Federal Reserve. This graph that you see here, this is how much money was available by the Federal Reserve since this, I believe, goes all the way back to 1970s right 1970s okay see the the graph is i'm going to point through this this is this graph is going up going up going up going up going pretty nice you know it's got a nice incline like this i guess 
and then the 1990s it flattens okay flattens in 2000 there was issues 2000 is over here right in the 2000 and bubble we're over here and they made they increased the money supply so you see the graph kick up a little bit the slope and then in the 2008 collapse the scam right the money theft money laundering over here they pumped right they released a few trillions of dollars into the markets made available and basically what happened was when uh, if you're part of uh, the group if you have hookups to the people who are releasing this money they called it qe yeah yeah qe was supposed to be uh, paid back turns out they hey let's keep printing cash. let's keep printing cash and a lot of us talked about this back then i was writing a lot of articles saying look man this is disaster right and i wrote an i even wrote an article back then in mid 2000s uh 2007 2008 2006 saying that food prices are about to double in the next seven years right and pretty much in the next seven years seven eight nine years food prices double people are like, what are you talking about chicho well money supply just went through the roof man right and what really happened was trillions of dollars were given to wall street and people who were hooked up and joe below me and you lost our homes lost our jobs and the middle class got knocked off a little bit right so there's less middle class in there was less middle class um in let's say 2015 then there, there were in 2007 right the middle class got knocked off they got trimmed by around um, some of the estimates i was reading anywhere between 15 to 20 percent of the middle class went down to the lower class right and one of the reasons was because of the money supply the money supply went trillions of dollars would put into the market uh citibank became part of the obama administration they bought back stocks they bought back property inflation hit went through the roof they don't call it inflation but that's what it was inflation right because the money supply went through the roof right now before we get on to the next peak let me just catch up with uh, uh this thing uh mixy chicho this is really interesting awesome i'm glad you're enjoying it qe is just counterfeiting money bad money drives out good and the stuff related to qe is insane right um we can't get into it in this stream maybe we'll get into it in another stream right just know that money supply went through the roof went through the, now this was going through the roof wow look at that steep curve see that incline there at the end see that thing there that's how much money was made available in the last year right let's zoom into this thing here's the 10-year chart of the same thing right now the 10-year chart starts off when 2021 2011 so we're already in the over here <laughs> let me take this down so I, I wish i had a pointer in this thing so we're already over here right during this steep curve now this steep curve is pretty steep relative to the curves before that right but if you zoom in right it doesn't look that bad but holy crap look at the last year that's that's like this it's it's like going going like this and then poof right got that let's zoom in a little bit more here's a five-year version of it Boop. that's a five-year version oh snap right what's going on what's going on here's the one-year version one-year version doesn't look that bad right because this is related to something that we talked about in personal finance playlist that we had right where i mentioned i put out a video saying specifically time matters everything's a fractal it's all relativistic right and if you go to our personal finance video um a playlist you'll find that video i don't have it uh, linked up right now unfortunately so i can't give it to you right now but basically it's talking about if you if you're in a market right whatever market you may be in over an extended period of time you might see the graph like the top graph holy camoles look at that movement but if you bought in you entered the market here here right it doesn't look that bad so it's really relativistic how long you've been in the market what market you're trying to enter in and what's going on with that market okay keep this in mind keep this in mind because we're about to look at the stock market okay 
yeah that's what's pumping that yeah yeah we're gonna get into that so awesome awesome uh real mc mike how are we doing that's why people got to learn cryptocurrencies other than bitcoin so that you can protect your money going to zero from the hyper information about to come start looking into bitcoin cash monero ripple etc bitcoin is uh somewhat comprised already by wall street also ci indeed uh th there's no doubt that uh, bitcoin is very centralized and by the way gang you don't necessarily have to be in cryptos you can be in any other assets that you want to be right as we're going to talk about on thursday i have decided to be in the collectibles market the collectibles market has seen tremendous growth over the last 20 years okay tremendous growth over the last 20 years because of inflation really because this is inflation this is money supply turn on the tap right and we're going to do a little bit of numbers here um crunch these numbers let me take these guys down now and by the way the peak that you see here way at the end there 40 percent of the total money supply m1 categorized as m1 was created in the last year since the inception 40 percent was created in the last year what the should we do a little mathematics let's do a little mathematics on this here let's do a little mathematics on this keep that graph in mind right here's the graph might as well because this is important this is the graph right here is let's say 1970 here is let's put on our markers right 1970 here 70 80 90 2000 2010 2020 so 1980 1990 2000 2010 2020 okay by curiosity uh Kimura says chicho how do you feel regarding minimum wage i mean i believe it locks the current uh, country's growth on the same stage even if they each year raise one or almost three. Uh, minimum wages we can talk about it because there are intricacies involved with that right as you saw the stock market s p this graph here where is it was it this one no not this one oh here we go this one as you see here relative to us minimum wage the s p is on unprecedented levels that means it's out of reach right so with monetary policy being this m1 right with monetary policy being that floodgates being opened up by the federal reserve just flooding the markets with money that money is not making it to the citizenry right it's not making it to the general jewel below to main street it's making it to wall street because those trillions of dollars and this is trillions upon trillions of dollars that I just released opened up the gate what that's done is gone into the stock market huge chunk of it right the s p price going through the roof and this started with uh, obama in 2008 right and right now in the last year it's gone into overdrive that money has gone to the s p so what you're seeing is people's wages haven't gone up but the market's gone up because the money being made available is going to buy stocks and property and collectibles and other things right no i didn't say that there's no educated okay the graph makes me feel <laughs> look up will precious metals uh, save me um will protect you i wouldn't say save you will decrease the hit right now take a look at this graph i'm just going to recreate it here right so up to 19 da, 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 1980s uh, 1990 okay so we got this guy let me just do a general right so around here and around so basically a graph goes like this and then it went like this for a while in the 1990s right and then in 2000 it got a little boost and then in 2008 it got a little boost right and then in 2020 it went here right that's basically a graph that we saw right if you want 
Here you go. Let's pop that in again. Right? Now, this number here is 4 trillion. This number here is 7 trillion. This is just in the last year. One year. Okay. One year. 70 four T so return on investment inflation rate of return let's do the calculation we talked about this right present value value minus previous value value divided by previous value and you can rename these anything you want depending on whatever that it is you're looking for this basically means present value seven trillion seven t you know we'll just put seven minus four we're going to compare it to this point here we're not even going back to 2000 we're, we're comparing it to here okay divided by previous four this becomes 3 over 4, which is equal to 0 0.75, which is equal to 75%, right? So 75% of relative to the 4 trillion that was available, 75% more funds, more money, liquidity was entered into the markets right so relative to where we were which is four trillion right 75 percent was added of the four trillion was added into the markets okay in the last year here's another way you can look at it okay you can go Compare it to the seven trillion. How much, what percent of the seven trillion dollars is new money that was generated in the last year? So again, present, present, present value minus, oh, hold on, let me do it this way. Or you can think about it this way, right? We want to do a comparison to find out what this how much this is relative to seven right and that's three right so you can go seven minus four divided by not four by the total seven so that's three over seven which is equal to 43 what is it 43 percent or something 43 percent 43 percent so these are the two numbers two percentages you want to think about right 75 percent additional funds were made available a year ago okay in the last year relative to four trillion dollars that were pumped into the markets right and relative to where we are right now which is seven trillion dollars 43 percent of the seven trillion dollars was made available this year okay in one year wow 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 right we got that let's look take a look at the dow jones here's the dow jones right let me bring up m1 again m1 see a similarity there something's going on the time frames are a little different right the 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 graph that you see here goes into 1990 right so 1990 was the flat curve here but the dow is doing this let me bring this up right nasdaq is even better <laughs> nasdaq is even better graph i stuck with the dow right just because people talk about the dow 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 right uh, because dow is a lot of legacy companies as well that basically there should be they're insolvent a lot of them they should be bankrupt but they're being still popped up right it's crazy right but what we're seeing here is this p 
peak that you see what is it uh, da, 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 1996 um, Oh, it's really hard to put it on here. I, I get distracted with it. America's afraid, and they should be. The Chinese are caught. Uh, but I think uh, in the United States, the problem is uh, the natives are restless. The American population is restless, and rightfully so, because they're being robbed, right? And they're afraid. Indeed, they are afraid. There's no doubt about it, right? So what we're seeing here, the, uh, here is this. 2008... Here, let's assume here. I don't even I don't even know. For for the Dow Jones, we're gonna go from it's going from zero, but it's, it's not zero. 1970s. So okay, let's say zero, which is not zero, up to forty thousand. Really, not forty thousand. Where where are we at? We're at thirty one thousand. So let's assume the peak here. Let's make this here. We'll put it here as well. So this is thirty thousand. 30k this is going to be 15k this is going to be the 15k uh, 10 5 0 uh, 20 25 right so 5k 10k uh, 20k 25k okay. apologies this is really messy but we're trying to get a feel for it right and let me take these graphs down. So up to mid 1990s, I'm just going to put little markers here. We're sitting at 10,000, right? And 2000 went up to like 15,000, and then it did a little flop down to 7,000. I know that market well. And then it went up to um, by 2016, it was at 20,000. So 2016 is 20,000. So I'm just going to draw this very general. In the night, in here is the kick up. Okay. So let me take these down. Chicho, rule one to get people together, you need an enemy. Yeah. Real or unreal? Some people will say invisible. Little ones. So here is the stock market, right? This is 1990s going up, 2000 bubble crash, the tech stocks, it didn't go down to five, it went down to around seven, okay? Uh, and then goes up to, this is 2008, right? Oh, no, sorry, not 2008. Uh, 2000, well, the graph should be a little bit better i'm sorry i'm sorry if i'm sort of killing it a little bit <laughs> and then we went up to here this is 2016 2019 we're around here uh, and then uh, it was 20,000 2018 and then it went up to 29,000 and then it dropped down to 18,000 and now it's on here okay do you follow I sort of brutalize this but basically this is what happened in mid 1980s the stock market started going up in the 19 not not as sharp as the 1990s 1990s was sharper so this should be like around here 1990s was sharper in 2000 we had a downturn it went up 2008 okay and then did another crash i should have the other crash here i can't remember if it went up yeah there was another serious crash and then it went up and then went up and basically in uh, 19 2019 or so it was sitting at twenty nine thousand, and in a matter of a week in a matter of a week okay it dropped 30 percent okay it went from around 29,000 down to around 18,000. Okay. At the beginning of 2000, uh, 2020, in a matter of a week to two weeks, it dropped 30%, right? And then what happened? It went from 18,000, right now sitting around 31,000, right? In one year in one year march 2020 has some of the biggest one day drops in market history yeah so right so in a matter of a week it dropped 30 percent right now 
if we're going to do the calculation, let's do the calculation. All right? How much did the stock market drop? If we're going to do this in red, let's do this in red. It went from 29,000 down to 18,000. So 18,000 minus 29,000 divided by 29,000. Right? Let's punch this in. Let me bring out my calculator. So 18, oops, clear, clear. 18 minus 29, a 18 minus 29. These calculators minus, I just should put 11, but I'm not, is equal to 11 and then divided by 29. It dropped 38% basically, right? It's more like 33% or something, but 30, let's go 35% negative drop, right? Now, keep this in mind, keep this in mind. Here's M1, right? What happened when that occurred with the 35% drop, the man, the legend Smith? Way down here, the Federal Reserve opens up the tap, releases trillions of dollars into the markets trillions of dollars into the markets free money free money right the market goes from 18,000 to 31,000 31 minus 18 divided by 18 now we're dividing by 18 because that's what we started off at this one we're dividing by 21 because we're 29 we dropped so it's negative 18 31 minus 18 31 minus 18 is 13 divided by 18 72 percent increase Seventy-two percent. That's insanity. That's insanity. Right? Where did that money come from? To kick up the Dow Jones seventy-two percent return in a matter of one year. that's debt on future generations that in my definition is not only inflation it's corruption right will something break possibly now that's the Dow right let's take a look at Bitcoin here's Bitcoin this is about a 10-year chart right about a 10-year chart it's nine years or so okay and just because you had a security blanket doesn't mean each person had that kind of investment indeed right people are talking with each other this is good good this is education mama says this is bitcoin right now, one of the reasons cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology came to be was because people looked at what happened in the 2008 scam theft that occurred, right? And people realized that when central power can do this, right? Their money means shit, right? Lark bar, yeah, this is the real Chicho. All the God says, the charts are back. The charts are back, brother. <laughs> it's great education, Chicho. My pleasure, man. I'm glad you guys are liking it, right? So, one reason blockchain technology came to be specifically Bitcoin, if you read the white papers, right, that came out, it was basically disruptive innovation kicking in 
as a necessity to save people's wealth, right? Labor, to save people's capital. Because when central banks, central power can flood the market, like no one would have even imagined, right? In the mainstream media, mainstream corporate propagandists and econom economists would have imagined that the graph that's this slope during the Obama administration, where they flood the markets in 2008 with trillions of dollars of funds going to Wall Street and the big banks and the big players, right? No one would have imagined that when this took this took 12 years to unfold, right? 2008 to 2020 12 years that in one year the graph would look like this all right well i shouldn't say no one imagined it people who created cryptocurrencies did people like me who were writing about it in the mid 2000s did all right there were many people who did but they didn't have a voice in the corporate propagandist machine to warn people that something nasty is coming our way it's a storm get ready okay so this is the bottom is the bitcoin graph for about nine years right this this one is a five-year chart for some reason i couldn't get up the 10 year this is the five-year chart right and again should have would have could have right should have been listening to our crypto videos we were putting out five years ago and whatnot right and here's the one year chart now the one year doesn't look as dramatic as this one but neither does the m1 people freak out right they go oh look at bitcoin this is, this is pachoo, pachoo. all right but then hey wait a second look at m1 but you but you all right what's going on here there is a linkage taking place here you could call it inflation you could call it protection you could call it people jumping on a different system and jumping off a previous system right possibly there's a lot of ways you can interpret this there's money laundering going on indeed and then here's the one-year chart which doesn't look that bad right relative to a stock market have you seen Tesla's stock? Have you seen Tilray? Have you seen some of the other stocks, how they're behaving? Bitcoin isn't behaving that much differently. However, your returns are pretty damn good, right? So for example, there's a stock out there called, let me take these guys down. And let me take M1 down too. Okay, let me just get rid of this down here, right? So if we're going to look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin a year ago was around 5,000, right? Right now it's around 50,000, 49,000, right? Lurk where, hey, Chicho, this kind of old news, but how do you feel about the whole Wall Street and GameStop debacle? I put out a video on that, uh, Lark. Take a look at it. Uh, we sort of said it's a game. Be careful. Be quick on the trigger. It would. I, I mentioned that when it was around 200 or something, it was probably going to, or 300, it was going to probably pop. To around 500 and then come down and that's probably basically what it did it went up to 490 and it's down to 50 dollars now right at that levels if you could short if it were big money you were probably shorting the crap out of it right it's it's a game right it's a, it's a game right now it's a trader's market right but here's the price of bitcoin here's what bitcoin has done right now its price is forty nine thousand. A year ago you could have bought it at five thousand and this is going to be your return which is going to be forty four thousand forty four thousand over five thousand forty five divided by five is nine all right so this is a nine hundred percent return all right stock market in the same year gave you seventy two percent return Bitcoin gave you nine hundred percent return all right okay this is bitcoin many other cryptos behaved similarly some better right there are certain stocks that did better tilray went from when when i was recommending it right 
just to you know th there's a lot of stock it's, it's it's not an investment anything but just mentioning that oh certain things might be doing moves which are cannabis stocks right right till rate two days ago hit 67 dollars we mentioned it might be a great time to buy when it was at three dollars 67 minus 3 64 over 3 21 and a third but let's call it 21 this would have given you 2100 percent return Tesla 10 years ago it was five dollars before after the split right now it's 800 so 800 minus 5 over 5 Did, who wants to do that 700 795 over 5 what, what is that I love charts and graph Chicho's dreams do it's not a Tilray is not 67 anymore it's now 30 and I don't recommend this is not financial advice do not recommend buying okay one five nine one five nine one five nine zero zero percent holy moly right holy moly do i recommend buying no but this is not financial advice we're not talking finance here <laughs> right so what is this all about what is this all about right. Saul uk chicho it's probably worth emphasizing that all of this is euphoric silliness reaching a turn Saul UK 100% agree however it has a lot to do it has a lot to do with the money supply with this let's bring out green it has a lot to do with this it has a lot to do with that let's make it blue maybe blue turns on better blue it has a lot to do with this right when when what was it 75 percent more additional liquid money is pumped into the system things are gonna blow up right now keep this in mind okay i want to take all this down this is this chart here by the way this happened in many other countries but i don't think they were as dramatic as this not in the western countries anyway i don't think 43 percent of the total money supply liquid money supply in canada was created in the last year in the united states as was right and that puts a burden on the US petrodollar right or the US dollar right then let me see Chicho gang I sent a link I don't, know, I don't know what that says but I'm gonna send the link to discord page general I came across it last night and I thought it was important okay awesome you're wrong just watch your <laughs> yeah Iran is another game as well I, I mentioned Western world uh, two past year yeah just Western world other countries yeah for sure for sure right but here's here's since Muhammad mentioned Iran here let's talk about the US right India had uh, already had a bit of related uh, uh, correction yeah now take a look at this thing let's assume they're very sensitive to us they're very sensitive <laughs> right now m1 is u.s currency being made available right 
So let's assume we're the United States. We have the money, right? We're in control of the money supply. How do you feel about the future of? I don't know what that is. Simple Tron 2000. Now, one thing that the United States uh, has as a buffer within it <laughs> beyond the mouth of infants forever. <laughs> so that's, that's, now, one of the one of the things that United States depends on, right? That basically is one of the variables that it uses and it's in it's in its calculus of um, its monetary supply its domestic policy its foreign policy its behavior right is that the US dollar is the world's reserve currency right so the world's reserve currency means that US dollar is basically accepted anywhere in the world uh, as a means of conducting trade right and that has been the case since after world war ii really okay since the early 19th century 20th century 1900s right so the united states has had the pleasure of having the world's reserve currency for a number of decades and the obligation that the united states has had is to not use the u.s currency as a weapon right and to be fiscally responsible and at at, at a point you could have exchanged us dollars for gold bullion but franklin d roosevelt killed that off in the 19 in 1933 in the build up to world war ii and nixon completely decoupled the us dollar uh, from the gold standard in the early 1970s in 1971 i believe okay so the us dollar which became the world's reserve currency at the beginning had the the backing of the gold standard so there was weight to the us dollar so if you had a hundred dollars in us funds you could have gone and exchanged that up to 1933 to gold bullion in the banks franklin d roosevelt took that off and if you're a foreign nation that had us reserves currency you could have gone to the u.s government and said hey we want gold back for that now nixon came along and everyone knew that that wasn't going to happen but nixon made it official in early 1970s saying that listen we're not going to redeem the u.s dollar for gold bullion anymore and we don't have enough gold to cover the u.s dollar the value of the u.s dollar so other countries outside the united states went well what the hey right why should we hold the u.s dollar why should the u.s dollar be the world's reserve currency right why if you're this country or 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 this country why should you hold u.s dollars in your reserve banks in your reserve right why should you do business among each other with us dollars only right what why not trade between each other using your own currencies or another reserve currency because this thing is no longer backed by gold right it's backed by nothing and when a country when a country can do this print as much money as it wants then the reserve currency the value of that money right that's not money it's currency right is depreciating over time right well the united states had to figure something out us had to figure something out because the natives were getting restless right so chicho not sure if you're going to cover it in this stream but you have uh, to look at the ccp these m1 printing it totally eclipses the us <laughs> yeah um, the us us money 
uh, purchasing power has decreased like 99 percent over the last hundred years right and uh, so we we put out a uh, 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 you, you have to look at the CCP uh, the M1 printing it totally eclipses yeah like uh, Saul I haven't looked at it uh, tell you the truth but to me the way they manage their finances doesn't affect me or us in the Western world as much as how the United States um, deals with its finances because the US is the world's reserve currency and agreed the bubble is all over the place right the money printing is insane and Saul if you have a good link for that uh, for the Chinese Communist Party I'm assuming CCP that's what you're referring to um, if you have a good link for us uh, link it up in our discord okay that'd be amazing are you seeing more streaming points today uh, Chicho yeah they've been printing money for the last 10 years holding USD while putting out yen. yeah they're trying to devalue the yen right the reason they're trying to devalue it because they want to stay the manufacturing capital of the world they want they want it to be cheap for industry to come there to make things right because they can't afford to decouple themselves from that industry not yet anyway that that's the direction they're going they don't want to be so dependent on foreign industry to make stuff in china and they're they're trying to uh turn back some of the environmental damage they've done i don't think they're they're, they're really doing it but uh that's what they're uh, pretending or maybe they are right but they built a lot as well right mm -hmm. so they're trying to keep the it, it's sort of currency by the way this stuff that you see here is also currency wars as well it's just me and you Joe Blow are not involved in these currency wars so we're the civilians being hurt in this right so what happens here is this take a look the US dollar used to be gold back it was a reserve currency of the world and US dollar decoupled itself from the gold standard so it these people can't redeem the US currency for gold bullion but they still want the US still wants the world to be using the US dollar because it gives us power it, end of story because the United States is the only country that is allowed to print US dollars so they control the money supply to the world right it's like you being a farmer that you control the food supply to the world right so if you and by the way keep this in mind if you want to control the food supply of the world what do you need to do you don't need to control the whole food supply in the world you just need to control protein okay keep that in mind and water of course okay so the US has to think something out here's what they do what does the world run on right let's go back let's go back let's go back Let's go back. What does the world run on? Boom. 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 Energy. Energy, energy, energy. Energy consumption. Energy makes the world go round, right? Energy, oxygen, water, exhaust this. Why? Oxygen and water as well. But world economy. World economy is run on energy. The cheaper the energy the faster it churns right the more expensive the energy the economy comes to a grinding halt right so the United States goes yeah energy <laughs> and the United States goes okay we're not gonna these people are restless because we can't give them gold for the US dollars but we're gonna lock them in that they have to use the US dollar right in trade how how are they gonna lock them in enter the house of Saud Saudi oh my god I'm spelling Saudi wrong Saudi Arabia anyway Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia okay the United States in the 1970s early 1970s there was the oil sort of hiccup there where people were lined up in the united states on to get oil because opec because saudi Arabia really controls opecs or controlled more of opec back then did just not in the same quantity it's just not in the same quantity yeah there was sort of a 
oil issue there, right? Because Saudi Arabia said, hey, we're going to cut off the tiles. We're going to do this. We're going to kick up the price. Do this, do this, do this. All of a sudden, there was energy shortages, right? Well, the United States comes to Saudi Arabia and says, listen, you better stop this nonsense or you're going to get spanked. And the other thing they said, we need the world to use, use the U.S. dollar, okay? So we'll give you backing. We'll protect the House of Saud, okay? We'll make sure you stay in power, the dictators in Saudi Arabia. The thing you need to do is do exactly as we say whenever we say it, okay? The other thing you need to do right away is sell oil only in U.S. dollars, right? Only in U.S. dollars. All the countries that need to buy oil from Saudi Arabia will need U.S. dollars to buy oil from Saudi Arabia, plus some of the other dictatorial powers in the uh, Middle East, right? The kingdoms, all the little guys that are put in place like Kuwait and, and all that jazz, right? So in the 1970s, the United States comes and cuts a deal. And there were others as well, right? There was Iraq. Huh? Iraq was a US puppet, right? They were only selling oil in US dollars, right? Like, if you remember, Saddam Hussein was put in power by the CIA to overthrow a democratically elected government in Iraq to be installed as a dictator because no democracy in the Middle East, right? Still a better deal than Putin offering up and all the guys to sell to Putin end up in the Serbia Lake, right? So Iraq was also part of this whole deal. So all these people needed U.S. dollars to buy oil, right? That's how the United States was able to stay as a world reserve currency because they cut a deal with all these different houses, right, or dictators or puppets they put in power that these people could only sell oil in U.S. dollars, right? And the United States is happy as apple pie, and they can do this, right? Print as much money as they want, as much as they want, right? Really, as fast as they want. Look at look at the chart. Wow, the last year. Holy schmoles, right? 43% of the total money supply in the world and in, in the United States that was produced through the Fed was created in the last year. 75% additional liquidity was entered into the market relative to where it was in the last year, right? Well, all is well for the U.S. dollar as long as the world can only conduct business in U.S. dollars, the petrodollar, right? Because why? Because they need to buy oil, right? Energy makes the world go around, right? Now, here's a hiccup. What happens if... Some of these nations that only sold the U.S. sold oil in U.S. dollars come out and say, mm, well, "We're going to accept other currencies because because we don't trust you guys. You guys are printing money up the yin yang, and we really can't do anything. We got enough U.S. dollars. We've bought hotels and airlines and all this jazz is devaluing, right? And our oil is decreasing." Right, so their supply of oil is decreasing, but the money they're being paid with, the currency they're being paid with, is also devaluing. So they wanted to diversify. One of the countries that wanted to diversify was Iraq. They said we're willing to accept other currencies. This was in the late 1990s or 2000, I believe. Saddam Hussein came out and said, "You know what? It's not just the U.S. dollar." You can also use the euro to buy oil from Iraq, right? 
Well, if this happens, then there's pressure on the US dollar and the US dollar is losing its reserve standing, right? And it wasn't just Iraq that said they were going to do trade outside of the US dollar. There were a handful of other countries said it as well. Well, Libya. See a pattern there? Iraq, Iran, Venezuela, Libya. All of them came out and said, we're willing to trade outside of the US dollar. Iran whereas went as far as creating an oil bruise where people could trade oil outside of the US dollar. Wow snap crackle pop what the hell not happy happy usa right because 30 years ago us dollars were the only reserve currency and they're, they're they are the only reserve currency but they mo what was it i believe like more than 90 percent of the trade in the world 20 years ago was done in us dollars right now it's down to around 80 percent if i remember my numbers correctly so what's going on right now is more countries are doing trade outside of the US dollar right and that's putting pressure on the US dollar right because they don't need to hold US dollars anymore they can hold other currencies right and there's basket of currencies SDR and stuff like this but we won't get into that right there's other currencies there are people doing trade between each other in their own currencies Russia and China being one right so they're decoupling themselves from the U.S. currency, right? Lark Park, have you heard the latest from RT, U.S. Secretary Building Airport in Syria near oil? Uh, the U.S. secret of it, yeah, it's crazy, man, right? And Syria, by the way. Oh, we forgot one of the main ones. Syria, right? Do you believe the Obama Democrat um, water exile aspirations for closer trade alliances to the EU have something to do with preserving the integrity? It, uh, a lot of things have to do with uh, maintaining the integrity of the US dollar, right? Because right now, the US is sitting there, and 20 years ago, when Iraq, Iran, Venezuela said they're going to decouple from the US dollar the united states said well we need to do something about that what were the choices you as an individual right if you had a business and a lot of the people that you were dealing with refused to buy your product what would you do what would you do you could make them a better deal when i talked to one of my students about this the student was talking about I asked him what would you do and his his reply was well you give them a better deal what if these people aren't willing to accept the better deal what would you do I said you would give them a better deal right I said okay the US offers them a better deal they refuse what do you do what do you do especially what do you do especially if more than 50 percent of your discretionary spending is spent on the military what would you do elder god give them freedom exactly right put an embargo on iran economic embargo no trade on the swift system you can't do trade Big, there's lots of issues there, right? Venezuela embargo. Annihilate Libya off the face of the map, right? They wanted to bring a gold standard, African currency, right? Ten years ago, Libya had the highest standard of living in, the, in all of Africa. Highest standard of living in all of Africa. The United States, the UK with this nato allies including canada wipe 
wiped it off the face of the earth right how so it's still there but there's slave open slave markets right annihilate libya in 2000 saddam hussein said no more us dollars we're doing oil in euros what do you do invade them annihilate them take it over if you can right what does that do well these people that needed oil from iraq they had euros they wanted to buy it uh, they can't they need to get us dollars again right they can't buy oil from iran because there's a whole embargo on it with banking systems or venezuela oops well, libya or they're producing oil but the eu uh france is just taking it right what is, what are they doing in syria what are they doing in syria well trump boy said it occupy their oil fields and take their oil that's exactly what they did right what did the new administration do biden first thing they announced one of the first things they announced in the first week we're increasing the troops in syria we're going to occupy their oil fields and take their oil all of that is related to this 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 okay what we need to do as individuals to make ourselves anti-fragile is decouple ourselves from this system it is ridiculously important to decouple yourself from this system <laughs> decouple yourself from the system and there's ways you can do it and we've talked about it in our personal finance videos it is extremely important to educate yourself to make sure you have multiple sources of revenue that you're not invested in this current economic system all your eggs any 